What's up, folks? Long time no see. I am just now pulling into Boulder after, let's see, let's see here. Oh my God, after six and a half hours of driving. That's not cool. I, uh, you know, technically I have no, I don't have to be anywhere today. But I wanted to come uh, to Boulder. I wanted to go to the climbing gym and uh, meet up with a buddy, get some chow, enjoy enjoy Sunday afternoon. So I insisted to myself that I drive all the way to Boulder, six and a half hours. Jesus. Um, I probably an hour of that is probably an hour of that is probably traffic. There you go. I took a long way to avoid a certain congestion spot that I know of and uh, ended up in traffic on 70. Why? I don't know. I don't know why there's traffic. Uh, on the middle of the interstate and then it just dissipates for no reason. But, anyways. What did I do is I went to my buddy's cabin uh, near uh, Blue Mesa Reservoir, in, near Cimarron, Cimarron, Colorado. Anyways, it's nice to get away and it was nice to uh, get some work done. We split some wood, chopped some trees down. Actually, there's a tree already cut down, so we cut wood, split wood, and cleaned up. It was uh, several hours of manual labor. It was great. And uh, I feel it everywhere in my body. I tried to take advantage of it. So while I was picking up twigs and stuff, I made sure that I was squatting. So I was, I was actually squatting for a long period of time yesterday. Yesterday. And uh, so now, weekend is coming to an end and I gotta go back to work. One good thing about work, I don't think I talked about it before, is last Friday, Friday before last, I got my first paycheck. And here's the thing, my paycheck was a week short of pay because I started in the middle of the pay period. So instead of having two weeks in the pay period, in that pay period, I only had one. And my paycheck was more than what I paid myself. My salary for a uh, two-week <clears throat> period. My salary for a two-week period was significant, significantly less than what I got paid on Friday for one week. Um, you know, and I and I. I had a personal goal that I wanted to double my income and for there was a lot of my life kind of started I don't know, after my last <clears throat> relationship I moved into an apartment and I diligently pursued a life as, as an entrepreneur and uh, as a health and wellness coach and all of that stuff. And one of my goals, personal goals, was to double my income. And what ended up happening is I continuously lost income as time went by. Uh, so, you know, my goal was to make more money, but I constantly, constantly lost money. Um, so all my avenues of, of, of income started to, A, I either just wanted to quit and said the hell with it, or they, they, okay, so I was doing really, I was doing fairly well with this whole vitamin thing. I was doing um, herbal supplement type of, uh, it was an MLM, but, uh, 
I didn't approach it and as an MLM, I didn't try to recruit people. It was used as a resource. So I basically was selling, uh, I didn't recruit people. There, anyways, it's not your typical MLM. Basically what it was, was a resource for herbs. And I saw a business opportunity in it and I got into it and uh, it got to a point where I was making a couple hundred bucks a month off of it. Um, but I gave that up because I didn't want to be involved with it. So I lost that. I lost my uh, position as a real estate agent where I was supposed to get a commission monthly and uh, that just got pulled off from underneath me. Uh, and then I retired from the military, from the National Guard. So that was a considerable source of my income. They, you know, when you retire from the Guard, you don't see any money and your retirement checks until you're 60. Unlike active duty, you collect right away. Not me, I have to wait 18 years. I got one of those years out of the way. 17 more to go. In the meantime, uh, just had this goal, had this goal, had this goal. Double my income, double my income, double my income. In the meantime, my income just kept dropping. Um, so what I ended up doing is with this job, I have achieved that goal. I doubled my income. Technically, I didn't have any income, but let's just say, let's pretend that my business didn't get shut down or taken away from me. Um, let's pretend that I still had my company and I was paying myself. Based, let's use that number, right? Based on that number, I've more than doubled my income. And all I had to do was get a job. Can you imagine that? I didn't have to create a course and sell it on the internet. I didn't have to attend webinars. I didn't have to create an email list. I didn't have to use social media, you know, correctly and wisely. I didn't have to uh, market myself. I didn't have to create my brand. I didn't have to, I didn't have to do anything except, oh look at this, except get a job. So, that being said, it's confirmation to me that the only there's a cop parked very poorly right there. The only way to obtain money is from work. Right, there's, in order to get something, you have to work. And specifically, specific, I mean specifically money. You, you, you have to get, you have to work to get money. That's the only resource. That's the only way to get it. Now granted, if you want to, uh, oh, somebody's pulled over. Anybody in there? Being nosy. If you want to make money ethically, it's gonna come from work. And if you wanna be an entrepreneur and make money, guess what, it's gonna come from work. One of the biggest things that somebody said to me when I was contemplating getting a job was, um, think about how much you work as an entrepreneur. You work more than eight hours a day. You work more than 10 hours a day. Um, because if you don't, your business will fail. Um, so, all I had to do was get a job. Doubled my income. Doubled my income. Coincidentally, I've also lowered my cost of living because I get, um, I get my meals are included because I work at a restaurant or a hotel slash casino. It's got a restaurant. I get to eat there for free. Also, I get gas compensation. We get a discount. Employees get a discount on gasoline. 
because the owner owns a gas station, so employees get a discount. Great. My two ex biggest expenses living in a van is food and gas. My cost of living may have actually gone down um, because I am. Those are two expenses I no longer have. I still have them, but they're considerably lower. Considerably lower. Uh, also, I'm getting reimbursed for my cell phone, which I added a cell phone. I have two phones now. So that's kind of a wash, but still. If I decide to go back to just having one phone, um, that would be cool. But what I like about having two phones is I don't have to, I only, like my personal phone is, uh, I don't associate with work. I don't give away, I don't have my work email on there. I don't, nobody from work knows my personal number. And the only reason I did this was because I wasn't getting connection in the building. So I, I got a new phone. Now I like it because I don't touch it. Come Friday evening, I don't touch my second phone. Unless it's to make a YouTube video. Right? Uh, hang out with my buddy. Uh, it's just good to have a friend, you know, and hang out and just do stuff. And even, even if it's work, just to do work. Drink a couple beers, you know. You know, Air Force buddy. And what was the other thing? Oh. Can you believe this? I'm gonna show you. Do you not know how hard it is for me to find footwear? Check out these sick ass boots, son. Limbs. Minim minimalist shoe. Um, I, I need a little something for work. Than what I, better than what I have. Ordered these limbs, and they don't fit. It's the biggest size I have, 48s. According to the chart, it equals 13 and a half. But here's a little secret of what you should do. Well, yeah, put your, put your foot in the shoe, yeah. But a little secret I heard is take the sock liner, which is that little foot imprint that's inside the shoe, take that out and step on it, and see if your foot overlaps that sock liner at all. And if it does, that's where the shoe is actually, your your foot has to, is being forced to conform, right? Because that's, that sock liner is the exact shape, same shape as the inside of the shoe. So when you, if you step on it and your toes hang over, that means when you put your foot in the shoe, that means they're gonna be pushed into that position. These are a minimalist shoe. They are a wide, they do have a wide toe box, but it just so happens that um, the size 48 is not long enough for my right foot. My left foot's all right, but for my right foot. So what happens is my toes are kind of pushed. I'm like, these toes are, are kind of pushed in there. And for something that I'm gonna wear for um, eight or more hours a day, uh, I'm not going to do that to my feet. I'm not gonna force, uh, my feet to be in an unnatural position and train them to be you know curled up not gonna happen so i gotta send them back and again i do not um i haven't been making these videos very long but let me tell you every winter it is an ordeal of uh, uh trying to find boots for the winter and i end up going to arizona and don't need don't need boots uh, this year i'm staying in colorado so i kind of would like some boots or at least a better pair of shoes um these were leather, I was gonna treat them and everything, but, uh, oh, I gotta go back, which sucks. Which leaves me with my Merrells. This is what I'm wearing, All right, currently wearing. They're not really a work shoe or, you know, they look, they look like I'm wearing tennis shoes at work. So I'm trying to find something that will work better. And it's hard. It's hard being giant. Oh, oh, I'm out of time. I guess I'll talk about something else later. I got an idea. All right. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'm sorry I don't post as much, but there's only like six of you watching anyway. So whatever. Bye.